The Jack Benny program, transcribed and presented by Lucky Strike, the cigarette that tastes better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. If you want better taste from your cigarette, Lucky Strike is the brand to get. It's toasted to give you the best taste, yet it's the toasted Cigarettes, they take fine tobacco, it's light, tobacco, it's mild, tobacco too. And it's toasted, yes, it's toasted, because the toasting brings the flavor right through. So to get better taste from your cigarette, Lucky Strike is the brand to get. It's toasted to give you the best taste, yet it's the toasted cigarette. This is Don Wilson, friends. I guess you all have heard of Bill Corum, the famous sports columnist, who's also president of Churchill Downs in Louisville, Kentucky. Well, he's one of the many millions of people who smoke Luckies, and this is what he says about them. I smoke Luckies because they give me the enjoyment I like, and they taste better than any other cigarette to me. Now, Bill Corum's reason for smoking Lucky Strike is the same one most Lucky smokers give, better taste. What makes a Lucky taste better? It's toasted to taste better. Now, Lucky's better taste begins with fine tobacco. L-S-M-F-T, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And then that tobacco is toasted. It's toasted. The famous Lucky Strike process brings Lucky's fine tobacco to its peak of flavor, tones up this naturally mild, good-tasting tobacco to make it taste even better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. That's why at Christmas time in particular, so many people give and get cartons of Lucky's. A brightly decorated carton of Lucky Strike says, Merry Christmas and Happy Smoking 200 times. Remember cartons of Lucky's, so nice to give, so wonderful to get. From Palm Springs, California, the Lucky Strike program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, and yours truly, Tom. Ladies and gentlemen, as always at the height of the tourist season here, Palm Springs is just full of celebrities. But now I give you the celebrity the whole town is talking about because he's the only one paying summer rates. And here he is, Jack Benny! Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, I don't care if the whole town is talking about me, because in Palm Springs, talk is the only thing that's cheap. <laughs> Believe me. Huh? Yeah, I know what you mean, Jack, but I've worked out a pretty good deal where I'm staying. Where, at the Biltmore? Yeah, I get 50% off of my bill, and in return, I put in three hours a day as a lifeguard. And yesterday, I... Wait a minute, wait a minute, Don, wait a minute. You did say lifeguard, did you? Yeah, Why? Well, it's just that I picture you more as a life raft. You know? <laughs> With a pontoon and back there. Well, you can joke all you want, but yesterday a man called for help and I dived into the pool and saved him. Really, Don? Yes, sir. And you should have heard the way they bawled me out. Bawled you out? You saved a man's life, didn't you? Yeah, but when I jumped in the pool, three people sitting on the lawn almost drowned. <laughs> And I've been telling everyone it rained yesterday. <laughs> but, Don... Oh, Jack, Jack. Yes, Bob? Say, uh... Bob Crosby, ladies and gentlemen. What, uh, what is it, Bob? Well, before we go any farther with the show, I'd like to take a roll call of the orchestra. <laughs> a roll call? Of the orchestra? That's We've never right. done that before. Well, believe me, Jack, I know what I'm doing. Well, all right. If you have to, go ahead, Bob. Okay. George. Here. Kerchief. Here. Songer. Here. Remley. <laughs> Bob. <laughs> Bob, I want to ask you. Bob, why... Why do you have to go through this roll call? Oh, I always do when we're out of town. But why? Why? Oh, I have to. I'm responsible to their Los Angeles parole board. 
<laughs> oh, I see. Well, don't let me stand in the way of the law. Hardy? Here. Tackerberry? Wait a minute. Tackerberry's one of my writers. He's on parole, too. <laughs> Righty. He keeps talking about the pen. I thought he meant paper, mate. <laughs> I'm sure glad that all the boys are now if we can Oh, hello, Mary Oh, hello, Jack I'm sorry I'm late, Jack But I was taking a golf lesson at Tamarisk And I just didn't notice the time That's all right, Mary So Ellsworth Vines gave you another lesson, eh? No, I switched to one of the other fellas. What was wrong? I find out he's married. <laughs> well, look, Mary, you don't have to make any dates here in Palm Springs. If you want to go out with someone, I'm here. Oh, no, Jack, not with you. What? Your idea of an exciting time here is to walk down Palm Canyon Drive and watch people put nickels in the parking meters. <laughs> yeah. Saturday was a dilly. <laughs> $163.45. Let's get out of the show because tonight we're... Uh-oh. What's the matter? Here comes Dennis. Well, what about it? You know, Mary, every time that kid opens his mouth, he says something silly and I'm aggravated for the rest of the week. But this time, he's not getting away with it. I'm ready for him. Well, hello, everybody. Hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Benny. Boy, two weeks in Palm Springs has sure made you look different. You see, Mary, he's starting already. Huh? <laughs> I'm sorry I haven't been able to see more of you up here, but I've been very busy. Busy, huh? What have you been doing? Oh, swimming a little every day, getting lots of sleep, eating good food, and catching up on my reading. Your reading, huh? Yeah, it's nice and quiet up here, and I can concentrate. Hamlet requires a lot of attention. Hamlet, huh? I consider Hamlet. it to be Shakespeare's finest work. Although I'd be the first to admit there are great qualities in Macbeth, Julius Caesar, and Othello. But to my way of thinking, Hamlet offers more scope and penetrates with a deeper insight into human nature. That's enough, Dennis. I won't listen to that kind of talk. But, Jack... I don't care. I'm on a vacation. I'm not going to let him aggravate me. But, Jack, he hasn't said anything silly. I know, and he's doing it on purpose. <laughs> Dennis, you're deliberately trying to annoy me. Oh, no, I'm not, Mr. Benny. Then how come you're talking intelligently? I can't help it. I was out in the sun too long. <laughs> huh? But I discovered a way to keep cool. You did? Yeah, I get a big punch bowl, fill it full of shaved ice, put in three lemons, two oranges, some ginger ale, a quarter scotch, a bottle of Smirnoff vodka, and five maraschino cherries. Dennis, you drink that? No, I sit in it. <laughs> Boy. And Dennis, now that you're back to normal again, do me a favor. Just go over in the corner and don't bother me. Okay. Do you mind if I read Hamlet? Read, read. What a crazy kid. <laughs> well, Jack, you won't have to put up with him much longer. Tomorrow we'll all be on our way back to Los Angeles. I know, and I've got a big surprise for everyone. Since you're all leaving tomorrow and I'm going to be staying down here till after Christmas... I want you all to come to my place tonight for our annual Christmas party. Oh, that's wonderful, Jack. Everybody's invited. And, Bob, make sure to bring the orchestra boys. The orchestra boys? Yeah. But tell them when we serve dinner to just casually walk into the dining room. <laughs> Not to line up and march. <laughs> okay, Jack, I I'll tell them. But, gee, you better serve them the food right away or they'll start banging their cups on the table. <laughs> I'll serve them, I'll serve them. And listen, kids, I got a nice big house that I rented. There's plenty of room. We'll have a tree, exchange gifts, and have a lot of fun. Don, you take over the show, will you? I'm going to leave right now and help Rochester get things ready. All right, Jack, shall we do the commercial now? Yes, Don, that'll be fine. What have the sportsman quartet prepared? Oh, something very appropriate for this time of year. It's called Winter Wonderland. Winter Wonderland? Mm -hmm. Well, that song is all about snow and sleigh bells. That doesn't fit Palm Springs. Don't worry about it, Jack. We've got it fixed, all right. Okay, go ahead. See you later, kids. All right, fellas, take it. Sleigh bells ring, are you listening? In the lane, snow is glistening. A beautiful sight, we're happy tonight. Walking in a winter wonderland On a way is the 
I'm glad that drugstore was open so I could finish my Christmas shopping. See, I get Christmas presents from everywhere. CBS, Lucky Strike, even my hometown, Waukegan. I wonder what Waukegan will do for me this Christmas. Last year they did a wonderful thing. They destroyed my birth certificate. <laughs> Now, no one will ever know. <laughs> jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Santa needs a nickel here if he wants to park his sleigh. <laughs> yum, bum, bum, da dum, dum, dum. Oh, pardon me, sir. That's quite so, Mr. Benny. Why, Mr. Pitzel. Well, Mr. Kitzel, this is a surprise. I didn't know you were here in Palm Springs. Oh, yes, I'm here already the last few days. Well, isn't that nice? Where are you staying? A place called Harry's Hacienda. <laughs> Harry's Hacienda. I've never heard of that. Nationally advertised, it isn't. Oh. <laughs> Well, if, if it isn't much of a place, I mean, why do you stay there? Where else for $7 a day can you get room, board, and a desk full of picture postcards from the El Mirador? <laughs> oh, I see. I said, well, tell me, do they have a swimming pool? Finally, I found it. You mean, 
You mean the swimming pool is that small? Small. This morning I had breakfast and the hole in my bagel was bigger. <laughs> well, what's the difference as long as you're having fun? Say, Mr. Kitzel, I'm having my cast over this evening for a little get-together. How would you and your wife like to join us? Thank you, but I'm afraid we couldn't make it. My wife is still upset from the steak ride last night. Oh, your wife was on a steak ride. Yes. What happened? It took eight men to put her on the horse. <laughs> oh, Mr. Kitzel, you must be joking. Your wife's not that heavy. Me, you could convince, but the horse, you can. <laughs> You mean, uh... The next time that horse runs, it'll be from a bottle of glue. <laughs> well, Mr. Kitzel, I'd like to talk to you longer, but I have to get home to help Rochester. Go right ahead, Mr. Benny, and enjoy yourself. Thank you. So long. Goodbye. Oh, say, uh, Mr. Benny. Yes, Mr. Kitzel. Tomorrow, if you've got a little time, why don't you come over and visit me and my wife? Well, I'll be glad to. How do I get to Harry's Hacienda? From here, you go straight down Palm Canyon Drive for five blocks till you come to the Park Lane Hotel. Uh-huh. Then you turn left and follow the sign that says to Harry's Hacienda for two miles. <laughs> two miles? But look, that'll take me way up in the mountains. That's right. Harry is a goat. <laughs> A ghost? Yes. Mr. Kitzel, you're joking. Smell me. <laughs> what? <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Benny. Goodbye, Mr. Kitzel, and Merry Christmas. And a happy Yule to you all. <laughs> It'll be fun being in Palm Springs for Christmas. Rochester, hand me some more tinsel for the tree, will you? Here you are, Mr. Benning. Yeah, I'm sure glad I decided to rent this house for Mr. and Mrs. Martin. It'll be just perfect for the party tonight. Yeah. Well, all the tinsel is on. I think I'll put on the ornaments. I'll put this nice red one up. Ouch! See, I'll put the blue one over here, and then... Ouch! And I'll put the green one up on top. There. Ouch! Oh, darn it. Boss, I told you to get a Christmas tree instead of this cactus plant. <laughs> Rochester. Rochester, I'm not going out and buy a Christmas tree when I have a perfectly good one at home. I want to put these gifts under it. Let's see. Here's Don's. Some nice dates. And this one's for Mary. Oh, and Rochester, here's the one I'm giving Remley. Boy, will he be surprised. How will he be surprised? You've got shaving lotion written all over the package. Well, you have to do that with Remley. When he opens a box and finds a bottle, he never stops to read the label. <laughs> Year. Last year, I gave him a miniature ship and a bottle. The mask stuck out of his mouth for three months. <laughs> Every time I asked him something, he had to answer me through the crow's nest. <laughs> Believe me, I know what I'm doing. Oh, Rock, that must be the gang. You let him in, and I'll, I'll go out in the kitchen and get the hors d'oeuvres. Okay. Well, hello, oh, Rock. Rock. Come, in. Come, in. Come in. Come in, everybody. Mr. Benny's in the kitchen. He'll be right out. Make yourselves at home. Hey, Jack's got a nice place here. Ah, but it's so cluttered up. Rochester, help me clean it up. I'll throw some of this stuff out. Not that, not that. That's the Christmas tree. Christmas tree? Hey, that's nothing but an old cactus plant. Oh, we would have had a tumbleweed, but the wind was blowing and we lost it coming through Indio. <laughs> Wait a minute. Look at that television set. It's got a coin box attached to it with a slot to put money in. Well, that's pay-as-you-see television. And Palm Springs is the only place where they're conducting this experiment. Jack has the same attachment on his set in Beverly Hills, and it's no experiment. <laughs> Jack, everybody here. Merry 
Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas. 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 Well, kids, I'm glad you're all here. We'll have a nice... Oh, there's the phone. I'll get it, boss. Thanks, Rochester. Say, Jack... This is a very nice place. I had no idea it was so large. Oh, yes. There's a kitchen, dinette, living room, two bedrooms, and a patio. You know, Mary, when you're a big star, you got to have plenty of room to entertain. Yeah. I just can't understand how you got all this for $85 a month. What's the difference? I got it. Now, come on, everybody. Let's put all the presents under the tree and... Hey, wait a minute. What's the matter? I had 12 candy canes, and now there are only 11. Where's the other one? Don't look at me. I'm not looking at you, but if your conscience bothers you, they're ten cents each. <laughs> oh, don't be so silly. Say, boss. Yeah, Rochester. Who was that on the phone? That was Mr. Coleman calling from Beverly Hills. Oh, Ronald Coleman? Yes, sir. He wanted to know if you'd be back in town for Christmas, and I told him that you couldn't possibly make it. You were staying in Palm Springs. Gee, that was nice of Ronnie to call. Is he planning a Christmas party? Now, yes. <laughs> He said he'd check with me later about New Year's. All right, all right. Hey, gang, why don't we open up our Christmas presents? No, no, it's too early. Everyone can take their gifts, but let's not open them until Christmas. Gee, I'm embarrassed, Mr. Benny. I got you a gift, but I left it at my hotel room. Oh, that's all right, Dennis. You didn't have to bother getting me anything anyway. Well, truthfully, I didn't know what to get you. You have practically everything, but I went all over Palm Springs and I finally found something. Really? What'd you get me, Dennis? A Gila monster. A Gila monster? Yeah, the man only charged me $3 for it. Dennis, a Gila monster is a deadly, poisonous, and vicious reptile. Why, it could snap a man's arm off. No wonder it took him so long to wrap the package. <laughs> Dennis, if that poisonous thing is in your room, you better call your hotel right now and warn them. Yeah, I guess I better. Hey, come on, kids, let's have some fun. Let's get this party rolling. Yeah, huh? let's play some games. Okay, but first I want to show you something, Mary. Me? Yeah, come on out in the hall for a second. All right. Well, here we are. Look up, Mary. Why, Jack, it's mistletoe. That's right. And that means that I, I get to kiss you. Oh, Jack. Now, come on, Mary. Give me a kiss. Now, pucker up. All right. There. I knew it. You ate the candy cane. <laughs> Here's your ten cents. <laughs> For a minute, I thought you were getting romantic. Romantic? Smantic. A crime must be solved. <laughs> now, come back. Let, let's get back to the party. <coughs> Mary, what was going on out there in the hall? Ask Boston Blackie. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Hey, Dennis. Dennis, did you call your hotel about that Gila monster? Yeah. What did they say? Nothing. The phone keeps ringing and ringing, but nobody answers. <laughs> what? Do you mind if I stay here tonight? Oh, oh. Now, come on. Let's get things started here. Let's all sing jingle. Yeah, yeah. Let's all sing, huh? <laughs> What's that noise? Remley wants to go home. <laughs> Remley, put down that hacksaw and use the door. <laughs> Gang. Now, come on, kid. Let's sing Jingle Bells. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Hold it! Hey, quiet jingle down! Bells, hold it! Bells, hold it! Hold it! Oh. Hold it. <laughs> What's going on here? Hold it, kid. It's the owner. What's the matter, Mr. Martin? I'll tell you what's the matter. I'm not going to stand for noisy parties like this going on in my house. Now, wait a second, Mr. Martin. So what if we are making a little noise? You're forgetting I'm paying you $85 a month to rent this house. Who ever dreamed you'd be throwing wild parties? When you came to me, you looked like a nice, quiet old man. <laughs> but look, Now I find out you're a Hollywood playboy. Look, Mr. Martin... And what are those convicts doing here? <laughs> those are my musicians. Fellas, this is a party. Stop making those license plates. <laughs> For heaven's sake. Not... 
they're not at home unless they're in jail. Huh? <laughs> I guess we were a little loud, Mr. Martin, but we didn't know you were here. We were only having a little Christmas party. Uh, a Christmas party? Yes, if you prefer, we can leave. Well... We didn't even get to sing the Christmas carols. Christmas carols? Yes, we, we always sing Christmas carols. Gee, I'd love to hear that. Well, why don't you and your wife join us? You really mean that, Mr. Bunny? Certainly, the more the merrier. Gee, thanks, I'll go get my wife and we'll join you in a party. Now, Dennis... Yeah, go get her. Dennis, every year at my Christmas party, you always sing a nice medley of Christmas carols. Yes, sir. Well, how about singing them first now? I'd be glad to. Quiet, everybody. Dennis is going to sing. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of my sponsor and my entire staff, I want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas. <laughs>